Welcome to Sixth Sense and Beyond, opening the spiritual world to the world, and I'm your host, Christina Andrianopoulos. And I'm Catherine Glass. <laughs> we, we have such an amazing show today. One of your good friends, Siri, is mm -hmm. going to be here. Tell us a little bit about her so our audience knows what to expect. Siri is a wonderful colleague. I have had the pleasure of experiencing her work myself, um, her reading ability as a medium. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I want to talk to her directly and share her with you. And um, she has some interesting things to talk about mediumship, the subject of mediumship with us. About. That's great. And then at one of the segments throughout the show, she is now going to do, you know, do some channeling or some reading. And, That's I mean, right. We've got, she's, she's going to be bringing some people up here, and you and I are going to disappear, and Siri's going to take over, and she's going to help and, some wonderful people. And the people. audience is just going to watch this unfold in front of your eyes. That's right. But you know what? We couldn't do this without our sponsors. Julio's Lic Liquors, right in Westboro, the Spirit Meet spirit. <laughs> I love that, spirit. and I love Ryan Maloney, the keeper of the quay or whatever that is, but it's great. Mm -hmm. And also Four Feathers, our friends from Four Feathers. That's right, our friends who we had on our last show who were here from Ka um, Kansas, Kansas and Oklahoma. Thank you so much to them for their sponsorship. Right. And so, in, you know, I wouldn't look like this if it wasn't for my hairstylist, Christian Ray. Thank you so much for making us all look like celebrities. That's right. And my clothes are from Treasure Chest, so I love people who want us to wear their clothes. That's awesome. And I you know. share the, the local community's. Um, Treasures. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the treasures in the treasures chest. So you know what we should do? Let's just go right into our guests who are sitting right with us and wanted to introduce okay. Siri. So Siri Bernson, she's from Boston and she comes to us um, at my invitation and I've been really excited about having her on the show because as I said I've experienced your work and I'm going to pretty much turn it over to you but I wanted to open with um, the topic that mediumship as m some of you may notice out there and I know we notice is really um, getting a lot of attention lately mm -hmm. um, in the world through tele reality shows and movies that are featuring mediums it's, it's time it's, it's rising and it's on you know the mainstream coming into the mainstream and I'd li I would like to ask Siri about maybe your opinions about that because there is a difference um, ar about training for mediumship versus just waking up one day and saying I'm a medium and there's actually certification that mediums can mm -hmm. receive and Siri is a certified medium yep. and that's something that does not come easily and so um, and maybe I want a little bit how you realized you were a medium I mean the, uh, the audience is really curious how it happens do you get Definitely. born with it do you yeah. suffer and then grow into it you know there's so, so many things share your story mm -hmm. so you want um, to. yeah so I was actually born this way so mediums there's the, um, mediums are born that's my theory and there's a lot of mediums that do um, do this work that they believe the same thing that mediums are born because they're doing a lot of um, testing lately on the brain of the medium and they, they say that um, the brain of the medium is uh, works in such a way that it goes to sleep but there's a part of the brain that apparently sort of lights up during a session and so there's a number of mediums that have gone through testing and I've done a little bit of testing with it and um, so yes mediums are born but that said everyone can practice the skill just like everyone can sing um, you have people that are just really gifted as singers and then you have people that are um, that that would be the background you know the back the, the background voices the choir and so on so everyone can learn how to do this so um, I have a layperson's question. Yes. Of course, you're an award-winning psychic medium, so mm -hmm. you have the inside questions. I have questions that maybe 500,000 viewers might have, mm -hmm. and that is, so when you read, or mm -hmm. when that part of the brain mm -hmm. wakes up while mm -hmm. the other part is going to sleep, what happens? Does something go into it, or does it go yes. through your body? Yeah, that's a great question. So what happens is that, um, so um, we are all sensitives. Um, some people are more sensitive than other people. And so really what happens with it is that um, my senses, they really come alive. And so literally I'll begin to sense spirit by my side, and then I'll sense them in my body. And I'll feel how they pass, and I will feel, um, it doesn't matter what type of passing it is, but I will feel what they walk through just before they're passing. And so I will use uh, the six senses in this. There's a, uh, there's a seeing, there's the, the the feeling, the hearing, the knowing, the tasting, and the smelling. And and you can also have this objectively or subjectively. So this is really technical that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But when they begin to come to me, um, I will usually feel them and see them and hear them. And then also when I'm doing a private session in my office, I can work with them in such a way that I can literally nudge one of them out of my energy and I can ask another one to come in. And I can move them in and out of my energy. And it's, actually, it's quite interesting when, when I have very different people that I work with, spirits I should say, that 
that I work with is um, that some of them are very joyful and then I have those that come through that had a very, very hard life. So it's interesting to me. I have another question because mm -hmm. you really opened up like a big can of yeah. angels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so do you have one particular one that hangs out with you and sort of like leads the way, opens the door like the hostess of an event? You know, you sort of welcome one or two in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, now you're talking about a spirit guide or, no, or um, we could call them helpers or spirit guides. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the helpers or the spirit guides, uh, we all have spirit guides. That's a fact. And then, um, and some of us, uh, we have, like for instance, when I do my work, I have very specific spirit guides for my work. And there's even a difference when I'm teaching and when I'm doing um, demonstration, there's, there's different energies that I work with then. And so my spirit guide, he usually comes to me in the morning um, before I do a session. Or like for instance, this morning, um, he appeared to me. Even there was a spirit guide that came to me that I haven't touched upon in, in like, probably in like 30 years since I was a child. So that was interesting to me. Wow. Um, yeah, so that was, and, and so that is also, that tells me that I'm preparing for something new down the road, probably in the summertime that I'm going to be working with the, the, my, one of my oldest spirit guides. Yeah. But um, yes, and so I've, I've had different mediums tell me who they, um, I had a Brenda Lawrence, she would, um, one time she had described the spirit guide to me, my main spirit guide, and then I had a medium, Hollis Durand, who also described my guide to me. And That's that was just a confir confirmation for me, um, who my guide was. And just quickly, um, can you talk a minute about certification? Do you, mm -hmm. do you yeah, so, um, so certification, um, I was certified by the Forever Family Foundation and they're located in New York and they are a wonderful organization. They, they, um, they have, there's, a, there's so many mediums that want to be certified and there are mm -hmm. so few that get through the program. And so through rigorous, rigorous studying of mediumship and connecting with spirit, um, um, what they do is they test us and there's probably one of the most difficult tests that I've ever done. Now I have a master's degree but that was by far the di most wow. difficult test yes because I was a nurse beforehand. I went through the testing and it went quite well but I didn't know until um, a few days later that I had passed. And so they don't respond when you're reading. They don't give you no, validation. It's they silent. Just, yeah, and this was this was actually done. There was a phone session. Then there was also there was over the internet. Uh, there was a webcam, and all they do um, with the with the webcam, they just sat there and they just made notes. And I I really got no feedback. And so I really had to trust the spirit that that, that was coming through that what I was saying was accurate. That's amazing. Yeah, and so. she and she got past the certification program. With flying and that's colors. a big deal. And um, I also just want to say we have to wrap up for a second and go to a break. But you also speak seven languages. Is that not right? Well, I know nine languages. Like, so she can <laughs> regular language language with other languages. spirit languages. No, <laughs> as in, I know nine languages, but I can speak four of them fairly fluently. Three of them I understand. It's just that I haven't spoken them in a long time. Yeah. Right. That's amazing. And but when spirits from other um, yes. countries come, it makes it easier. Any, any medium can speak to spirits from other countries because it's telepathic. But I just feel like there's more to it. Well, oh, absolutely, because language. that actually, th there's like a, the spirit language is like an added language, and when I have people coming through that, for instance, they, they spoke Japanese or mm -hmm. Greek or, or any, mm -hmm. or for instance, I don't speak Spanish, and when they come through with the Spanish, I can detect the words, and I can sort mm -hmm. of enunciate okay. the words. Well, so. we, our, our viewers now are going to get a treat. Now, they've learned a little bit about mm -hmm. you, and we're going to bring some young ladies here. Wonderful. And, and you'll see what comes through. Best okay. way to experience it is to experience it. Yeah, okay. and so because you're probably going to be in another place, um, someone's going to have to keep track of when the segment's over, but don't worry about it. Okay. You can just keep going, and if we have to take a break while you're still doing we'll it. just get the cane. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't Can worry about it. All right, well, thank you so much, and don't go away. We'll don't be go right away. back. We'll be right back. Make a So, we're, um, so we are now here with, uh, with uh, Christine, with Karen, and with Beth. And, um, and so just as I arrived, I started already getting messages from Spirit. And I actually, um, so what I'm going to start doing is I'm gonna actually going to start with you, Beth, first, because I know that you wanted to hear from your dad. Mm -hmm. And w you know that when I came in, it was not dad who came through first, right. because I started talking about there was a young man that actually didn't want to come through. And, um, and I actually just want to go into, into this young man. So I know that this morning I was connected to, there were two incidents that I was connecting with. There were two young men, two young men that I was uh, connecting to. And, um, and one of them I do know that would have either crashed into a wall or crashed into a tree or there's something about crashing into something that I know with one of them. Mm -hmm. And the other one I do know with the other young man. So the two of them are together, but I feel like the two of them did not know one another. And the other um, and this is the two of them that would be in the 20s. One of them may be a little bit younger than the other one, as in one of them may, may be sort of in the early to mid 20s and the other one would have been sort of mid to later 20s. And with one of the young men, and you understood when I said to you, um, because I was talking about one of the young men that would have had, um, there's a sense of, um, 
being at home and I, he passes at home and I have to talk about parents either mom or dad that would have found him when he passes and you know his mom then or you know the family of you're connected to the family in some ways yes okay because I feel like I need to bring a message through from the young man to you um, to, to pass it on to that would be his um, fiance or girlfriend that, yes. that would be your cousin so um, if that is okay because I feel like she also I'm not sure if there's like a couple of years ago there's it feels new or it feels recent or she's not quite over it yet or I have to say to you there's a sense of her still healing with the heart because I have to say mm -hmm. um, I have to bring to her a tremendous amount of apology for having done what I did because I feel like this young man also he did not share with her what how he was doing and that makes sense doesn't it well it's he she did know how he was doing he had actually called her um, and and threatened to to kill himself um, but it was just last weekend the anniversary of his death okay so it was just last week the anniversary yeah. as in the first or the second honor like it's new um, no um, it feels like let's put it this it's not 10 years ago it doesn't feel like it's 10 15 years ago it feels more recent you're saying no to that no I may it, be it getting was, the two of them confused with the two yeah. young men because mm -hmm, uh, you understand yours being more recent yes okay yeah. so let me just work with sure, you for just absolutely. a second in regards to um, hold on just a second <laughs> I have to say to the spirit hold on just a second um, in regards to your young man um, the one that was like in his mid-20s mm -hmm. you understood that as being your um, your stepson's uh, right. one of his very very best friends yes. um, and would you understand that his passing is then is more recent Yes. Okay. And he's the one that either drove into the wall or drove into the yes. tree or something like that. Okay. Yes. And also in your family, there's a lot of police officers, there's connection to police or, or, or. There um, were a lot of p police involved in that. Okay. Um, so the two young men are together in spirits, but I feel what, and, but you understood when I said to you that um, with what young, one of the young men that there's, there's a sense of not getting the air through. Um, yes, he hanged. Okay. Cause I, yes. Um, <laughs> I was going to say that, but, um, because he's holding my throat. Um, could you let his, and could you, because I feel that the two of them, I still need to say from his point of view that I feel like people either were not quite aware of, like even though he shared with people how depressed he was, I still feel that it came like a thunder, like nobody expected it, nobody yeah. anticipated it. So I guess what I'm saying to you is that I don't feel that he would have been um, diagnosed with a mental illness, like I don't feel that there was diagnosis no. involved in this. Yeah. And so I feel like there's a message for the family um, or for your cousin then is to just sort of honor my memory. I feel like it's as simple as that. Mm. And uh, because I feel like, um, I feel like in some ways that she has, um, she has been trying to either live to his name or there's something about her trying to remember his name because I feel Always. like we need to remember his name. Always. And I feel, and I also need to say to her that please remember my name at all times. Now I'm going to switch gears and, um, and you are the one, we have a lot of spirits around you. I just need to t let you know that. Um, because also we started talking about a younger lady that would have, um, that, that would have passed. And this has to be a, f a very, very good friend of yours. Mm -hmm. And I have to say to you that the way she looks to me, um, she is, um, I have to say drop that gorgeous it's a bad way of expressing it but she is stunning yes. she was really stunning and I am aware that she would have passed as in I have to say that th with her there was a mental illness with yes. her and her passing this is not we can say this is a sudden passing but I have to say to you that I see it more as a long-term ailment because he would have dealt with the, the, mm -hmm. the depression for a long time yes now with her also and you actually said um, that um, she really likes you, by the way. She really, really, really loves you because you are the healer. You're the wonderful. I don't know why it is, but I need to put all these roses around you. So I'm not sure if there's a rose connection to you, but I have to put roses and roses and roses around you. It's okay. My friend was talking about was blonde and blue eyes like her. Okay, maybe that is what it is. It's just that yeah. I'm really drawn to you, and I have to say to you from her friend is that please live up to my name because I feel that you need to know that you are just as gorgeous as she was, the inside and out. Um, that mm -hmm. I have to say to you that there's a beauty from the inside and out to you. And I feel like she's the one that has been, it's almost like she's just asking permission, can I stay with you sometimes? Because I feel mm -hmm. that you are the one that you walk around. It's kind of like you're the, the, the matrix of the family. Um, not quite the matrix, but you are sort of a, you're, you're in charge of your squadron, if I can say so. And you are the healer, you're the nurse, you're the, the, you're the medicine woman. You're also very, very intuitive. And I'm not sure if you're aware of that, but it's just that this lady, this young lady is, is just wanted to say that to you. Um, with one of the two men, um, I'm honest with you, I'm, I'm hearing it sort of at the same time. There's three things that are coming through to me. I need to acknowledge a name that is either Edward or Edwin, or the, the, there's an E initial that is very connect, very strongly connected to one of the two young men. I feel like I'm going back to you, actually, Beth, mm -hmm. to tell you the truth. And I also with him, I also have to talk about the J or the Jake or the Joe connection. There's a very short Joe name or Jake name that is connected to... Um, they did have a friend named Joe. 
well. Okay, John. Okay, wonderful. And then also on top of that, I have to talk about the T initial that to me would be either Ted or Tim or the T. There's a big T that I need to say hello to too. And, um, and I also feel that I need to say to you in regards to your stepson, um, and I, I'm aware that your dad is sitting right next to me. Um, because he's kind of like he's letting all these young people come through first because I feel I have to say to you that your dad is someone that he loved 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 young people he loved to be around young people mm -hmm. I'm aware your dad actually sitting right next to me that he would have had military service or some sort of a mm -hmm. some sort of a service in his background and I feel that there's a sense of American pride with him mm -hmm. I'm also aware that he loved wearing his hats because mm -hmm. I, I can and I can see that one of his hats was left left behind mm -hmm. and that um, and I have to tell you that whoever has the hat right now they really may want to wash it because I, <laughs> I have to tell you that the way it comes to me is like I can smell his eyes like oh this could use a good wash out. Maybe it's cologne. Um, <laughs> I don't know it just feels well it's more like right forehead sweat yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> to tell you the truth. So with your dad though also um, would you also understand with your dad at some point in his life like he would have had a little bit of weight. At one time yeah. yeah at one time in his life. That said before his passing though he's talking about having a lot of chest issues. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you that you look so similar to him like the eye area he's just pointing at the eyes and say he sees mine sees mine sees mine. And he also um, the way we decided how you were going to sit on the couch yeah. was um, that he said let the runner sit next to you and you said long time ago you used to be a runner. Yeah. But I also had to say to you that in regards to you and your dad there's something about going together either through the roller skating rink or there's something about doing things together because we are rolling together, we're rolling together. At Charles River where we rode the bikes there were always roller skaters. One of because I, I can see the roller skaters. in between. Yeah. Because yeah. I can see the roller skaters going by, yeah. and, uh, and I have to say to you from your dad, this, these were the good times. Yep. I want to go into sort of the last few moments of her life, because I know that you were not right next to him when he passes, mm -hmm. and what he's shown me is that you had a really, you had a very, you had such a hard time with it because I feel frantic with you, because you're trying to help him breathe, and he's saying that there's nothing you could have done, because right. there's an obstruction in the breathing, mm -hmm. and, um, and with the obstruction in the breathing, um, it's almost like you were, ye I'm not sure if you were yelling or if you're just yelling in your head, do something, do something, do something, and there's a sense of panic with you before his passing. Um, more so with my brother. My brother was more of that. Okay, one of the two of you. Yeah. Okay, I just, I just feel like yeah. there's a sense of yeah. panic before, yeah, there was, before there your was. dad's passing. And, and so your brother is one that has the, the hat? Yes. The scarlet cap, okay. Because your dad is actually just saying that, send my love to him too, because I feel like your brother really needs to hear from yeah. him because there's a sense of such deep loss. Yes. Not having dad around. Yes. With your dad though, uh, with your dad though, um, I have to say that to you that he's doing really well in heaven because Great. his passing, it didn't just, I'm not sure if he had a big funeral, if there was a lot of people that, that came to his, um, I just feel like he was a very, very popular guy. Um, he, in his later life, he was um, a crossing guard after retirement and all the, the kids made him a book. Oh, okay. It was really cool, a book about my father. Okay, because all the people that came around, yeah. all the people, because I feel like your dad is just one of the to all the, all the people that came to, yeah. to came to acknowledge and came to uh, to say that you know, just sort yeah. of to honor his his life, really to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. So I need to let you know that your dad is. I mean, he. I have to tell you, he is. He is. Um, Fun, fun, fun. He's the type of guy that if I ever wanted to go to Disney, he'd be the one that he would be sitting on front of the ride and he'd say, let's go for the biggest ride there is. Because I feel like he's wanted to take me to like Canopy Lake Park or something like that. And it's like, we're going or Six Flags. And I feel like he's just wanted to go for the big ride. For the Tons big of it. He had a lot of energy. I know. I have to say that um, if anyone ever wanted to have a dad like that, um, he would be the one that we want, would, would want to have. From her dad to you, keep on the good work because you are like that gladiator. Never, ever, ever give up your dreams because mm -hmm. you're such a profound, loving, healing energy with you. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that you know it or realize it because people may tell you how good you are at what you do, but you tend to brush it off. Mm -hmm. And you have to open up to it a little bit more. You have mm -hmm. to hear what people say to you because there are times when we all have our dips. We all have sort of, we all fall down a little bit emotionally. And those are the times that you need to reach out. And I feel that you have a very good support system, but also express to people, like, I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit blue. Let's go to the movies or do something. Mm -hmm. Because you take on so much from others, and you don't necessarily share too much with people, do you? Not always. Mm -hmm. well, not always, OK. Mm -hmm. It would be a good thing for you to share. Um, I have also have to say to you, with your dad, though, there's a lady that is very religious, um, that I'm not sure if this is his mom. I can actually get a sense of a motherly connection with him. Mm -hmm. And um, and I have to say to you that the two of them, like, to tell you the truth, you have all these spirits around you, and there's mm -hmm. such love coming from all of them to you. That's a great thing to hear. Yeah, your dad was the awesome. Awesome. <laughs> he was a character. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He was. And it could be it could be his mom. 
she she was very religious. I know. That's why I said I feel like it's as small that mm. is with it. And and uh, busting chops on the Ohio side. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back, and that was an amazing segment, wasn't, wasn't it? Great? It was great. It was awesome. It was you know, I, I just love the show. I love the show because, first of all, to have you as a co-host, an award-winning psychic medium, mm -hmm. but then to bring a guest like Siri was profound. Yes, I mean, that's my intention. We're going to have really high-quality people come onto this show. And, and that's what's so good about this show because we offer this platform for psychic mediums and those who are gifted paranormal of all different gifts, yes, right? Yeah, to, to, to help the world understand what it is. What's mm -hmm. a tarot reader? What's a healer? What's an energy healer? What's right. a what's And a what's medium? a real one versus one somebody who may not charlatan, be. Charlatan, right. right. Right, right. I like that. I, you said the word, not me. But anyway. <laughs> so guess what? We're at the part where we do psychic tips. Psychic tips right. for the week. Okay. So what should we do? I think we should do something about how to connect with your own loved ones when you want to have a connection with them because we had a mediumship demonstration today. So you can actually do that? Yes, I think so. So People what do you do? Do you like go in meditation and pray or how do you do of, it? Sort of. Sort okay. of. Well, it's really good to get quiet mm -hmm. as you can. Take a minute and um, really ground your energy. Send some energy through your feet into the earth perhaps or just get in touch with your breathing and get quiet and it's really important to have an image of the loved one you're hoping to connect with in your mind either a physical picture of them in front mm -hmm. of you or um, you can just call them in into your mind in your heart because they're always with you in your heart and when you get in that quiet more still state and just speak to them say I miss you I'm thinking of you I love you I would love to have some kind of contact with you and so let you could them actually know. say that you can yes. say yes Get in touch with me, will you? Let them know. And then it's important because you get quiet when you're quiet mm -hmm. and you connect with your breathing. What you're doing is you're able to calm yourself to raise your vibrational oh. frequency higher. You see, the spirit world vibrates at a different frequency than, mm -hmm. than we do here on Earth. So they will come and sometimes lower theirs a little bit and we have to rise to meet them. And it's like fine-tuning a radio. But yes, it takes some training and time to do that, but when you are really missing your loved one and you're wanting to try to connect, you can do these tips. Get a picture of them, bring right. them to your mind, ask them to come to you, and then you have to really pay attention to signs in nature, license plates, flowers, songs on the radio, oh, messages great. from that come through friends. And the that's name not a may coincidence get when that happens. I don't believe it is at all, no. You know, many times when I, I want some answers from just my higher self, and, you know, many of us think of, of our higher self as God or, you know, Christ or spirit guide. Mm -hmm. When I want some answers, a lot of times I'll see the number 18. And my birthday's August 18th, so I'll see 818. I'll see license plate, 18, 18. I'm like, ooh, so okay, maybe I'm talking to you. Yeah, yeah, something like that. And mm -hmm. also, Christina, they, they come to us in our dreams because we are more relaxed. Our conscious mind is mm -hmm. let down. And that's called a visitation. Oh, so I, I do have a story about that. The okay. other day, I had a quick dream where my husband who passed away, um, my son's father, he just fleetingly went through. He was very happy. He looked like he did when my son was little. My son's a 20 now. Mm -hmm. Very happy. And I just said, don't go away. And he just smiled and just went. And I woke up myself crying because it was so real and I wanted him to stay. Okay. So can I call him back? Absolutely. You, mm -hmm. Here's an example of how to do that. Before you go to sleep at night, let him know. What's his name, Tom? Thomas. Thomas, I would love to have a connection with you in the dream time. Please come to me. And it's worked for me. If you keep trying, it can happen. And it may not be in the dream, but it may, you know, they have a life there. They're busy, they're doing things. It's mm -hmm. not just like on demand. You mean but they're not just overseeing us? <laughs> they love us, they're, they're able mm -hmm. to be aware of us and do watch over us mm -hmm. and do want to help our lives, but they are also evolving and doing things. Yep. So they can come and go. Remember, they don't have bodies, they have their thought, it's mm -hmm. consciousness. And thought can be in more than one place at that's, a time. That's true. So if they hear or sense you're calling to them, they can be aware of that even though they may be over here visiting their grandchildren or something. You know what, we're getting really in tune too because the other day I was thinking about you mm -hmm. and you called and I was like, whoa, I communicated we're, with we're you. We're starting to do that all I the know, time. I know. We're becoming soul sisters more and more, but right? Really, yes. <laughs> yes. But really, really, you can connect with your loved ones just with your heart, your intention, mm -hmm. and I promise you some kind of sign will come and That's always great. you can call a medium and, That's and great. have a session that goes And they could call deeper. you and, and every time you talk, you're, you know, many times you talk, your name comes up and you can find us on our website, Six Sense and Beyond. Yes, and I just want to say one more time, Siri Bernson, yes. spiritoflight.com. She does privates. She's also a teacher. She teaches mediumship. That is so great. And she was just powerful to know seven languages and then psychic languages, I just love too. Her. But 
Thank you so much. This is it. I can't believe how fast it went by. Know, it was like, like a flash. It's Thank amazing. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to bring you really cool shows. Mm -hmm. And our wonderful sponsors, Julio Spirit Meet Spirit. And, and then Healing Essence Center from Concord, Massachusetts. Yes, absolutely. And Christian, thank you so much for making us all look like celebrities in treasure chests. Keep throwing the clothing this way, right? <laughs> right. Got to have our clothes. And watch <laughs> my other show, uh, City Vibes Metro, on Thursday night at 930. And our website, Six Cents and Beyond. And when you see us out and about, either of us stop us and say hello and just shake our hand or give us a big hug. Definitely. Right? Until yeah. next time. Until next time. Okay. Okay.